It is right now noon and we are breaking into programming because Madison County Health Leaders are about to give us an update on COVID-19 in our area. Let's go ahead and listen in. Government, health care and emergency response agencies will bring you this briefing on our community's response to COVID-19. Our speakers today will be Dr. Pam Hudson, CEO, Crestwood Medical Center, and Dr. Roger Smoligan, Regional Dean of the UAB School of Medicine. Uh, at this point, I'll give the following numbers. Uh, in the state of Alabama, there are 1,088,370 cases of COVID-19. In Madison County, 71,990, having resulted in 787 deaths. Current positivity rate for testing in Madison County is 42.3%. Uh, a number that I'll add to that to try to explain uh, the, the surge that we're having currently is the current seven-day average of daily increases in Madison County is 834.57, which represents the second highest number of the pandemic. Uh, with that said, I would also like to mention that uh, if you're streaming live on Facebook, uh, you will see uh, a couple of internet addresses to websites where you can go and you can order your uh, free home test kits. Uh, if you're not streaming live on Facebook, you can go to the City of Huntsville's Facebook page and, and get those links as well. With that said, we'll go to our first speaker, Dr. Pam Hudson, Crestwood Medical Center. Thank you, Jeff, and Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, it's, it looks like it's going to be an exciting one. Um, it's a pleasure to represent our hospitals and our first responders, uh, physicians and nurses in this community to you all, um, and to let you know that our hospitals and our um, rapid response systems are under significant strain right now. Um, as Jeff pointed out, we are at uh, certainly at a surging point. Um, today, we have 285 hospitalized patients in our county. That, I believe, is uh, the highest that we have seen through any of the surges. 45 of those patients are in the ICU, and 27 of those are on ventilators. Um, of substantial impact to uh, the hospitals uh, and other healthcare providers' ability to, to, to respond to our community promptly is the, the, the large number of employees who are out um, either with COVID or under a quarantine process. Uh, and, and again, the, uh, uh, the, the challenge here for, especially in healthcare, is that we have a very prescribed um, quarantine requirement. So um, it, is, it is important your hospitals are very safe um, because we are adhering to that, but um, we are at a, at, a, um, at a capacity based on staffing because we have so many folks out, possibly as many as almost 400 across the county uh, in the hospital. So that's, that's a substantial absence from the workforce. You see it uh, probably um, in other essential services that uh, may come to your home, garbage pickup, uh, et cetera. Uh, other, other community services uh, are also strained uh, because of illness. Um, as Jeff mentioned, in Alabama, we are seeing um, a, a surge in terms of hospitalizations, a surge of about 33 percent over the last seven days per the CDC numbers. Um, however, there do appear to be some signs that the Omicron surge is peaking. Uh, in Madison County, we had a 26 percent decline in total cases over the last seven days, uh, which is great news if, um, if we're if we're getting all the test results, uh, that, that, that would be somewhat reassuring. As you know, hospitalizations are a lagging indicator, so, um, so we are likely to be struggling in the hospitals for um, another couple of weeks. Um, unfortunately, we are leading the state with our positivity rates uh, in the 40 percent, um, and that, uh, that is a, a troubling statistic. Um, the CDC confirms that both uh, um, us here locally, United States and regionally, uh, the, the variants that we're seeing are uh, substantially the Omicron, 96 to 99 percent of the time. Um, it has gone from zero percent in mid-December to almost 99 percent uh, right now. So it's a pretty uh, dramatic increase. Um, as you probably have heard and are reading, the Alpha and the Delta variants tended to be more severe and critical illnesses. Um, and the uh, Delta added the the extra feature of high transmissibility, and Omicron takes the prize uh, of all time in terms of transmissibility. Um, the transmission is exceeding the, um, the, that of the Delta peak, for at least for hospitalizations. 
The vaccine is still the most important initiative, uh, and to clarify what that means, what vaccination means now, is the initial series plus a booster. It is very clear both from our local data and from the CDC's data that the uh, the primary series is very important to have, but the people who have also been boosted have a very, very low um, incidence of being hospitalized uh, in the ICU on a ventilator, et cetera. So if you have vaccinated, you're not done, please boost um, as quickly as you can um, because it, it does seem to be um, the thing that is, uh, that is very helpful with Omicron. Thankfully, uh, and hopefully, the models are predicting that we're nearing the end of this surge, which means that hopefully we're peaking. Um, and, but, uh, but there's still reason for you to be very cautious when you are out and about. Uh, UAB's Dr. Sag reports that you still have a 70% chance of exposure if you're in a group of 10. You have a 90% of exposure in a crowd of 20 or more. So that should inform your decisions about where you go right now and, and who you go with. Um, Omicron's been tough on kids. Uh, the latest report uh, this morning, I think we've got some 90, uh, 90 plus children uh, across the state that are hospitalized with um, some in the ICU. And that's, uh, that's new for, for this, this round. As usual, the mask discussions uh, abound. The CDC released some guidance um, Thankfully, it's right in line with what we've been talking about here uh, over the past weeks and months, and that is a well-fit mask um, is, is an uh, excellent idea in school children and everybody else. Masking is how we control the source of infection. Um, the cloth masks are, have fallen out of favor, if you will. Studies are showing that um, both parties, in a, in a party of two, uh, each party wearing a mask uh, made of cloth, is it only takes some minutes to be able to transmit back and forth, whereas with a medical grade mask, um, it is in the in a few hours, and if you're wearing a KN95 or a N95, uh, 25 hours of safety in a group of two, both of whom um, are have the ability to trans transmit the disease. The same distancing guidance is out there, and and then also keep an eye on the latest quarantine. Uh, the CDC is rapidly changing their recommendations. Just as with every surge, as we learn more, uh, we get smarter about it. Um, just a brief comment about schools, uh, and that is that, uh, that that just because we see our schools take some action, either to go virtual uh, or make some adjustments, um, doesn't necessarily mean this is any different kind of infection control practice than what we have done in the past uh, with influenza, for example. You can't have school if your teachers are all sick, and, and the schools probably have some cutoff place where if you don't have a certain percentage of your teachers available to teach that you, you go virtual and, and so um, so be cautious and, and keep an ear out. Our leaders in really every area of society are struggling with how to deal with absences. Um, I will say uh, vaccination rates are probably what's helping our community. Um, now, right now, Madison County has 62.5% uh, vaccinated um, according to the CDC but only 32% have been vaccinated primary series plus the booster. So clearly that's where we need to focus. Um, another couple of statistics that might be of interest to you to help uh, encourage you to boost, is, uh, to vaccinate first of all and to boost is uh, the data from October shows that an unvaccinated person has five times the risk of a positive test uh, and 14 times the risk of dying compared to someone who is vaccinated. And, and then if you look at somebody who's been vaccinated and boosted compared to an unvaccinated, the unvaccinated person has a 10 time risk of a positive test and a 20 times higher risk of, uh, of dying. So vaccinate and boost. And I think that's the message for the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the month. And, and uh, do be cautious about um, uh, your, your use of things like the uh, 911 calls. Please uh, use those for true emergencies and, and seek other resources if appropriate uh, for um, emergencies that don't require our, our, our great paramedics uh, teams to be called out. And uh, similar for emergency departments, um, some of the concerns of, uh, of, of throughput, uh, if, if you have a true emergency, the emergency room is where you need to go. But there are many, many other resources uh, in our community that you can reach out for more minor illness, um, in particular um, during this surge. That's it. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Hudson. Now we'll go to Dr. Roger Smolligan from UAB School of Medicine. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Birdwell and Dr. Hudson, and thank you for that uh, excellent presentation. And we've heard the numbers, uh, we've heard the statistics, and I want to put a little bit of a personal touch on it um, that hopefully brings to life what we've just heard even more, because those are, those are good numbers. But then I had the privilege again to round at Huntsville Hospital last week, and I'm seeing the evidence of what Dr. Hudson has just talked about. Um, what we're seeing is more and more patients admitted to the hospital with COVID. What we're seeing is that the vast majority of those who are getting really ill from COVID in the hospital, when I go room to room, they're the ones who unfortunately did not get the vaccine. And many times they regret it. Um, sometimes it's not uncommon for me to meet patients who had one vaccine. And I say, when did you get it? Well, they started feeling ill and then they got worried appropriately and scheduled a vaccine, went and got it. But by the time they had done that, they, the vaccine had not had time to work. So that's why we are so interested because we, we hate as physicians, we hate to see as hospital administrators, as we see patients come into the hospital with something that we know could have been prevented. Now, I know that some of you are going to say, but it's happening to the vaccinated as well. It's happening to the boosted as well. And you are absolutely right. But let me tell you what's happening there. Um, those who are vaccinated and boosted, and I have friends, close friends and colleagues and people who have missed work who have been vaccinated and boosted who got COVID recently. I'm talking last week. But thankfully, they went home. They did have a little fever. They didn't feel well. One person told me they said it felt worse than when they had the flu. So they got sick. But some of these people were people who had risk factors, who might have gotten deathly ill, might have died had they not been vaccinated prior to getting this, what we call breakthrough case of COVID. So I'm trying to impress upon you the value for your own health and for the protection of your own body, your own life, and those around you. Because uh, when, I, when I talked, I called my colleague in, at UAB today, their numbers are very similar actually to what's going on here as far as who's in the hospital. They do have maybe 20% of people who have been vaccinated. I said, and this, I was talking to an in infectious disease physician who rounded last week at UAB Hospital in Birmingham. He said, Roger, you know who it was? It's very sad, but it's the people who have, have received a transplant, maybe a kidney transplant or a lung transplant or a heart transplant. These people live on immunosuppressant drugs. They don't have the ability to fight infection like everybody else. They don't have the ability to produce antibodies even after the vaccine to the level that the average person in the in the population does he said we also are seeing some of the people with severe heart disease or severe kidney disease or severe other diseases that are chronic chronically managed uh, managed well but that puts them in, in at increased risk to get these severe responses to a, a covid uh, infection and they're the ones who who whereas remember the the vaccinated boosted person might get it in the current because it's so transmissible like dr hudson mentioned it's so transmissible I have become more and more careful wearing my mask. And this is my surgical grade, and this is my N95. And if you're gonna put me in the middle of a crowd, I may put this on. It's not that comfortable in N95, to be honest. It has to fit tight. You have to have a seal. You don't want air going around the sides or it's not really doing, doing any good for you or the person around you. But I'm gonna mask carefully because I'm seeing people who are boosted get the infection, but thankfully, they do have to miss work. It's, it's hard on the, the public. It's hard on all of us because we want to be able to have society functioning. You can't function when such a large number of our people are out sick with COVID. I do want to mention for those who are not vaccinated, um, there are some treatments out there um, as outpatients if you are in a very high risk situation. And unfortunately, there's such short supply of, of medicines that work for Omicron that they're having to be reserved for the people with absolutely highest risk. We're talking people with immunosuppression, multiple comorbid conditions, in other words, multiple chronic diseases. These are the people who can qualify because there's just not enough of it around. One is the, the monoclonal antibody. There's only one. The previous one that worked beautifully for Delta, I was encouraging folks who, who were not vaccinated, who got Delta, who had risk factors to get that. It, that one doesn't work for Omicron. There's a new one, a newer one out called Sotrovimab. That's the name of it. And it works, but there's, it's in such short supply. We're talking about for the entire city, we're only getting a handful of doses per week available through either Huntsville Hospital, Crestwood Hospital, or maybe another uh, location or two in town. There is a pill you've, heard, you've all heard about in the news about the new pill called Paxlovid. It's a combination medication. 
it actually does reduce the risk of people developing severe disease and being hospitalized if they have risk factors for that, uh, down from about a 6% chance down to 1% chance. That medicine is also in short supply. It is mainly being supplied through the Walmart and, and Sam's Club in, uh, in our community. I did make phone calls yesterday. That is out. They're, they've given out all of those doses for this week, but we hope that they will get recurring doses. So if, you have, if you're a high-risk person and you get COVID and you are not vaccinated, I really want you to seek that out. Check it out, and, and your physician can call that prescription into Walmart. Um, there's one that's, that's been uh, approved off-label. It's called remdesivir, which is one we've been using in, in patients in the hospital. It actually works if you give a dose three, uh, it's an IV infusion three days in a row. No one is really set up to do that yet. We're not doing it. That does reduce for some of our really high-risk people. We may have to go that route eventually. There's one more pill available that's a twice-a-day pill for five days. It's called Molnupiravir, Molnupiravir. This is also available at Walmart and Sam's pharmacies. They, there are some doses out there. I will tell you the data on that one as I reviewed it uh, this morning reduces the chances for a, a very high-risk person of being hospitalized down from 10% down to 7%. So it's a small, it's a small effect. So I, I don't mean to be negative about it, but I, and you can hear those numbers. I, I really don't want anybody to put their confidence in these medications. First of all, they're very difficult to get. Second of all, the absolute best thing you can do is what we've heard already today, and that is sign up for your vaccine, get it, it's effective, it's safe, um, it's available. I, I got online yesterday just to be sure for this talk. You can easily schedule your vaccine at one of the local pharmacies or at one of the hospitals. There, This is very easily, you, you Google that and you can get yourself an appointment in the next day or two, possibly this afternoon. And I would highly encourage it, especially that booster dose, I think is important as well. And, and vaccinate your children. The five, it's available five to 12 now. I'm a pediatrician and an internist. The pediatric side to me, an ounce, remember that good old saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Thank you, Dr. Smoligan. And thank you for watching today. Uh, our next scheduled briefing is Wednesday, February 2nd at noon. Until then, critical updates will be posted to the City of Huntsville's COVID-19 webpage, as well as the websites of our other partners here today. Until then, stay safe, stay separate, and remember to sanitize. At this point, we'll take questions. Uh, as always, as you come to the mic, please identify yourself and who you are affiliated with. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Emily, and I'm with WHNT News 19. Uh, my question is for Dr. Smolligan. Uh, you were mentioning how there's kind of a limited supply in hospitals of, you know, the treatments that uh, can be used. So how are hospitals prioritizing which patients are the ones that get them? And, you know, how is that a message for people who aren't vaccinated to, to get vaccinated? That's a great question. And because it is in sh such short supply, um, they're setting the requirement quite high. So we're looking at people who are either a transplant patient or have severe immunocompromised uh, immune system for whatever reason, you know, whatever chronic disease is causing that. Um, so that, to be honest with you, that is, is about the main people who we're able to give it to right now. Uh, we would love to give it to more people, but what is available and what is even more effective, we know is that vaccine. So, and you know, whether it's the Pfizer or the Moderna is what we're focusing on. I can tell you that the other one, J&J, &J, is still available. Um, I know the CDC has said it's not the, the one of choice, but any vaccine is better than no vaccine. And I, I would just clarify that once you are hospitalized, the treatment changes and you're no longer talking about the monoclonal antibody, which is what Dr. Smoligan was talking about. Those, the, um, the, the oral medicine and the monoclonal antibodies are for very early in the course of, of treatment as an outpatient. In the, in the hospitals, we have plenty of supply of the remdesivir and the other medications that we use to treat hospitalized patients with, um, with COVID. Thank you for clarifying that. Thank you. At this point, we'll end this briefing. Thank you for coming. 
Well, you've been listening there to uh, local health leaders, uh, one from Crestwood Medical Center, another from University of Alabama School of Medicine, talking about our North Alabama COVID situation, how we're doing in the fight against the pandemic. One of the things that stood out to me, Alex, uh, something that we've heard but uh, hadn't heard as as fervently as we just heard it from these doctors, cloth masks have fallen out of favor, they say. Uh, they say studies show that it only takes a few minutes for for the virus to penetrate those cloth uh, masks or face coverings as we, as we call them. They say now they're recommending medical grade surgical masks to prevent the spread of the virus. Also, unvaccinated people, they say, 10 times more likely to get COVID and 20 times more likely to die. Again, those are the unvaccinated people. Very staggering numbers. Yeah, and another thing that they said was that we're seeing the second highest seven day increase in cases since the pandemic began. I mean, we're seeing a surge in hospitalizations cases, but they are saying that they are also thinking that we're seeing the peak of this variant as the number of ca total cases in the last week did go down 26%. But one thing that they did mention was to make sure that you do wear a mask because it only takes a matter of minutes to get infected. I mean, they said 70% chance of being infected if you're in a group of 10 and if you're in a larger group of 20 that jumps up to 90 percent so it's very very transmissible so they're urging you to take these precautions get your vaccine if you can and um just make sure that you're staying safe now the vaccine works they say some of these drugs to treat COVID are in such short supply right now that uh, you can't count on being able to get those that some of those are right now reserved for the people who have the most severe situations that COVID might actually kill them and they're just not taking chances. Get the vaccine, they say. Get boosted if you've had the vaccine. That's right. Well, we'll make sure to bring you the latest updates on this briefing. I'll be making sure to break down what they said yeah. on Way 31 Evening News throughout the afternoon. Yeah, right now we return you to regular programming. Have a great afternoon, everybody.